Hello everyone, what's going on? I'm Gaff, the Master974, back again today, and welcome to another Valve Source Code tutorial follow-up video. And today I'm going to be looking at the Molotov video that I did. Let's just get right into it. So I need to give a thank you to the PSP Secret for pointing out a game-breaking issue to me, which is where if you give an NPC a Molotov to throw, then when they throw the Molotov, the game crashes. Now, the reason for this is because I structured the code in such a way that I only expected the player to throw the Molotov. I didn't consider NPC usage at all. So as a result, when the throw Molotov function gets called, it tries to find a player, but because the NPC is not a player, then you get a null pointer and the game crashes. So that's my bad for not considering NPC usage. However, I'm going to get to something a little bit later where I think that there's a better solution to this where you basically don't even need to give NPCs like citizens the Molotov as a weapon in the first place. Let's get to some other stuff first. So I know towards the end of the original video I talked about how to make fires do more damage. It turns out it's actually really simple. You just need to change the value of the fire damage base convar. So for example, I change it from 1 to 10. And if I show some stock gameplay right around now, then you can see how much more damage fires do to any sort of breakable props or even the player. So that is just something I should have known and said in the previous video, but didn't. So getting towards the fix of this crash that I'm talking about, you want to go to weaponmolotov.h and you want to change the input of the throw molotov function to be instead of a C base player called asterisk P player, a C base combat character called asterisk P thrower. And then you want to go to weapon molotov.cpp, go to the operator handle anim event function, and you want to remove the C base player asterisk P owner line and replace the instances of P owner with P operator. P operator being one of the inputs of the operator handle anim event function, which is a C base combat character. Next, you want to go to the throw molotov function. Replace the C base player asterisk P player input with C base combat character asterisk P thrower. And then with the vector vec I line, you want to change P player to P thrower. And you also want to add V up vec SRC vec throw after V right to define three new vectors. And then after this, you want to contain the code from P player arrow I vectors to vec throw plus equals v forward multiplied by 1200 inside of an if statement that reads if p thrower arrow is player as you'll probably see in the video right now. You also want to remove the vector from in front of the vec src line and the vector vec throw line. At the beginning of this new if statement you want to add a c base player called asterisk p player which equals two base player of p thrower and then if exclamation mark p player then return. And you also want to move the game stats line from the end of the function to be below the vec throw plus equals v forward multiplied by 1200 at the end of that if statement. But then you also want to create an else statement that contains this code. So I'm going to be using the citizen in this case because you know you'd expect citizens to be the only NPCs that use the Molotovs. So this is specifically going to be targeting the citizen code. But you want to add p thrower arrow get attachment of and then in speech marks anim underscore attachment underscore rh then vec src as you'll see in the video then create a vector called vec target which equals p thrower arrow get enemy with brackets after it arrow get abs origin and then vec throw equals vec check throw of p thrower vec src vec target 650.1.0 then if vec throw is exactly equal to vec free origin, then we change vec throw. So vec throw equals vec check toss of p thrower vec src vec target minus one, 1 1.0 true. And then if vec throw is exactly equal to vec free origin again, then do get vectors of and v forward null and v up. And then vec throw equals v forward multiplied by 750 plus v up multiplied by 175. Now this was taken from I believe the combine soldier code that determines if they can actually throw grenades. So it checks to see if they can throw it 
And if it's too high or out of range, then they toss it instead. But in this case, worst case scenario, the citizen with the Molotov will just throw it in some sort of forwardly direction if they can't be deemed to throw it or even toss it. So I am considering, for example, aerial enemies, like especially the ceiling turret camera things. NPC citizens just don't like uh, trying to throw Molotovs at that. So finally, I'm just going to get to a couple of changes that make the Molotov throw properly without it suddenly appearing in the idle animation when it's thrown. So you want to go to the item post frame function inside of weaponmolotov.cpp and inside of the if m underscore b redraw statement, after the reload line, you just want to add return and you might need to add curly brackets before the reload and after the return line just so it's all contained within the if statement. And then in the reload function below the send weapon anim line, you want to add m underscore fl next primary attack equals gp globals arrow cur time plus sequence duration and m underscore fl time weapon idle equals gp globals arrow cur time plus sequence duration. Now this was taken from the frag grenade code and it should actually decrease the throw rate of molotovs at least for the player and doesn't make it so the idle animation interrupts any sort of throwing action. So that's just a better consideration for the player, I guess. I'm going to move on to the better functionality thing that I talked about earlier. And to demonstrate this, I'm actually going to be modifying the combine soldier code. Now let's get into what the change is actually going to be and how this can apply to citizens to make this Molotov functionality a bit better. So you want to go to NPC combine.cpp go to the handle anim event function, find case combine ae gren toss, and then find the if m underscore npc state is exactly equal to npc state script, but it's the else statement. And then you want to remove the frag grenade create line, or at least comment it out. And then I'm going to make it so the soldier throws a molotov instead. So you want to do c grenade underscore molotov called asterisk p molotov, which equals inside of brackets C grenade underscore Molotov asterisk, then after the brackets create, and then in another set of brackets, then in speech marks grenade underscore Molotov, then after the speech marks do vec start, vec free angle this, as you'll see in the video, then P Molotov arrow set abs velocity of M underscore vec toss velocity, P Molotov arrow set local angular velocity of, then a Q angle of, and then the x, y, and z components equal random arrow random float from minus 100 to minus 500. Then p molotov arrow set thrower of this, and p molotov arrow set owner entity of this. And you might need to go to the very top of the file and do hashtag include of grenade molotov.h to get this to work. But you can save and compile, and if I just show you some stock gameplay here, and I can always use um, inputs so you can actually see this a bit better. But basically, when the Combine Soldier is in a position to actually try and throw a grenade at the player, you can see in this case that it's actually being replaced with a Molotov. There's no instance where the Combine Soldier actually has the grenade as a weapon to be thrown. In fact, if you actually try to do that, then the Combine Soldier kind of just A poses or something. Like They don't know how to handle throwing frag grenades as a weapon. So my thinking is you'd have to do something like what the Combine Soldier code does just to citizens instead. So if the AI or whatever is responsible for making, say, the Combine Soldier's throw grenade applies to the citizen so that the citizen realizes they can throw a Molotov, then they do like the throwing animation and throw a Molotov and there's no instance where they actually have the Molotov as a weapon, if that makes sense. That way they can have another weapon like the SMG-1 or the AR-2 and it doesn't end up in this situation that I'm talking about here. I'm sure if you could, for example, fix the frag grenade issues that I talked about for the citizens or the combine soldiers, then the frag grenade code would crash the game just like the Molotov code did here because the frag grenade code is only used by the player, it seems. So if the NPCs could use the frag grenades, then the game crash would happen in the same way that the Molotov crash happened earlier. But that's the follow-up video everyone, I hope you found this somewhat helpful and informative. 
and let me know what you think and if there's any other issues with this or any other considerations that I haven't thought about when making this video and I hope to see you again very soon for another follow-up video so yeah take care there peace out see you later and sorry if I screwed up with the audio commentary it happens and um, yeah have a great day